man even after she has said that the man will show up again and once the man shows up and she sees uh, him like this all the decisions they are taking everything will be evaporated and then she will not know what to say the man was so captivating for her and eventually they went on and searched the day for the wedding and the day for the wedding was coming like this and she was saying i cannot marry this man i shouldn't marry this man if i get hooked up with this man my life is lost and wasted forever and then a day to the wedding everybody was expecting where it was going to take place she ran to the police station she said do me a favor lock me up in the prison until i tell you to release me they said why he said i need to get away from something that will destroy my life i don't have the boldness i don't have the courage i don't have the ability to get away from that man lock me up and they locked her up in the prison and on the wedding day she was in the prison voluntarily after the wedding day she was in the prison voluntarily until the man gave up and then she came out of the prison and she was free that's that woman was not necessarily a christian she just knew i shouldn't marry this man can you lock up yourself like that all those friends are coming and then you are taking decisions during this retreat and they will come again and introduce this and introduce that and you do not have the power the courage and you do not have the strength to overcome can you lock up yourself in your room and can you lock up yourself in your own house can you put up that phone and can you just make sure that they are not able to get to you that's what paul the apostle would have done because he had his steadfast mind and he set his affections on things on night and he said everything i got in this retreat i will not lose it i know how i lost what i got in the past how those people will come and say this and say that this time i will not lose what i've got i'm talking to somebody i said i will not lose what i've got i said i will not lose what i've got you're not losing it in jesus name is going to take steadfast next steadfast pursuit or single-minded pursuit after the heavenly home number two sinful passion driving men driving people towards a horrible hell there is a hell jesus spoke about hell more than any other preacher in the bible old testament or new testament he spoke about hell for matthew he began to tell the people matthew chapter 8 in matthew chapter 8 i'm reading here from verse 11 matthew chapter 8 we're reading from verse 11, and i say unto you that many shall come from the east and from the west I shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom, the Jews, the children of the kingdom, the church goers, the children of the kingdom, the nominal Christians, the children of the kingdom, the religious people are not righteous, the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth that's uh, jesus speaking about hell that's a hell to shun that's a hell to avoid there's a hell to escape and look at chapter 45 matthew chapter 45 chapter 25 verse 41 matthew chapter 25 i'm reading from verse 41 then shall you say unto them on the left hand depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels the same eternal hell prepared for the devil is where sinners will go and think of the suffering it will be unbearable if a place that is supposed to make satan to make the devil feel the pangs and the punishment and the pain and the horror 
and the terror in the places for satan and is to make satan feel the suffering and any human being is also there will that satan and will the demons think of the pain those who get there will feel look at verse 46 and these shall go into everlasting punishment hell is a place of everlasting punishment mark chapter 9 in mark chapter 9 we're reading from verse 43 and if thy hand offend thee cut it off does those who are steadfastly minded to get to heaven and they say at all costs whatever happens that hell i will not get there that means those are the people that not there's a burning hell there's an eternal hell there's an everlasting hell there's a place of everlasting punishment and they're making up their minds and they're saying i will not get there i will not get there and therefore whatever they will have to do so that they will not get to that hell they said i'm ready to do it anybody as important to me as my right hand if it's going to cause me to get to hell i cut him off anybody as dear as precious to you as your right eye if it's going to make you to get to hell you say i'm not going to get to hell for you i'm not going to get to hell loving you and being attached having affection for you i will cut you off that's what the lord is saying look at that verse 43 and if thy hand offend thee cut it off it is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell into the fire ah there's fire in hell did somebody say there's no fire in hell that's a mistake that's not right that's wrong there is fire in hell jesus said into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched where the one dies not and the fire is not quenched and if thy foot offend thee means of transportation means of movement you know it's it's like your leg so important to you as your leg without him you cannot get to where you need to go maybe he supplies the money for the transportation maybe he gives the car for the transportation but when you are in the car together you know what he does you're a lady when you're sitting there together in the front you know the all the caressing and all the things and you're saying in your mind this is not right this is not right but i can't resist him because the one is my feet is the one that gives me motion is the one that gives me transportation if i tell him now that i don't like this i don't want this i want to go to heaven he will frown at it and he'll say are you calling me a sinner i need to do something about this all these things that you know will influence your life little little drops of water make a mighty ocean you fall here you fall there you fall there are you going to rise are you going to take your stand and make sure that you are a pilgrim you are a candidate for heaven that's why it says if thy foot offend thee cut it off it is better for thee to enter into life than uh, with one hand or with one foot than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire hell is a place of burning it's a place of fire it's a place of suffering that's what jesus said fire that never shall be quenched where their worm dies not and the fire is not quenched and if than i what can i do without that eye what can i do is the person that makes me to see is a person he sees a lot of things for me he gives me information and the things i wouldn't see ordinarily he is the one that makes me to see that's your eye and it stands for you anywhere and it goes for you anywhere and makes you see what you will not see if that eye somebody as precious to you as your eye as important for you as your eye as needful to you as your eye if thine eye offend thee block it out it's not talking of your natural eye it's talking about that person that person so close to you so precious to you i cannot live i cannot go anywhere without him she is the one he is the one that sees everything i don't see if thine eye offend thee block it out 
it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire into hell fire you see what the lord is saying he said it's a place of everlasting punishment and because of that you want to avoid it by all means you want to shake it off by all means there are sinful passions that lead people there and you want to make sure that by the grace of god all those sinful passions all those sinful activities you are not involved with them i'm reading from revelation chapter 14 Revelation chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 10. Revelation chapter 14, and we're reading from verse 10. Revelation 14, verse 10. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is, a, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and ye shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lord and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast or and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name a revelation chapter 20 from verse 11 and i saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was no place found for them and i saw the dead small and great i saw the dead small and great i saw the dead small and great stand before god and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered the, up the dead which were in them hold on hold on what does this mean when somebody dies like the story of the rich man he died when he died immediately his spirit his soul went to hellfire but the body was still here on earth and the body was buried we're told the rich man died also and was buried and then he found himself his spirit and his soul in hell and he lifted up his eyes and he saw abraham afar off and he said father abraham send lazarus to me to bring to just cool my tongue with a drop of water because i am tormented where in this flame there's fire there that's where the spirit and the soul goes immediately a sinner dies immediately a backslider dies immediately a false prophet dies a false teacher that's where they go immediately the spirit the soul they go there to hell but the body is still here and is buried and then on the day of resurrection the power of god will raise that body and the soul and the spirit that had been in hell since that man died will join to the body and then spirit soul and body the complete man will now go to the lake of fire hell has fire there's burning there's suffering there's agony there's darkness in hell fire and it's the spirit and the soul that is there now on this day great white throne judgment the spirit and the soul and the body will now join together and it says death and hell were cast into the lake of fire what that means is that death and hell cast in lake of fire nobody will be dying anymore because all those who go to that lake of fire they'll be there forever and ever and ever suffering eternal suffering everlasting suffering it's a place of suffering they 
did I not come out of that place? And that's what it says in verse 15. And whosoever, whosoever a church man, whosoever a church woman, whosoever a backslider, whosoever a sinner, whosoever an adult worshiper, whosoever was not found reaching in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's why the Lord is saying that you do everything possible if you have not repented to turn away from sin and to say a final forever bye bye to sin and whatever is happening you set your mind you set your heart on that heavenly home and you say this hell i will not be there listen to me there are people that play with their souls you steal now and you know that the thieves will get to hell and then after stealing what if you had an accident and died without a chance of repentance there are people when they're sick because i am sick there's nobody to pray for me my people are saying they will carry me somewhere and they carry you to the idol shrine and then while you are there in the idol shrine you die there you will go to hell why don't you endure even if you're sick even if you're suffering even if you are not healed the suffering of sickness cannot be compared with the suffering of hellfire that sickness even if you are not healed you'll be you will die and when you die you're free from that sickness but if you are carried to the idol shrine if you are carried to a place of occultism where they say they are praying and they're throwing this and splashing this on you and you die there no matter who buries you you will go to hell it's hellfire that's the reason why you say whatever happens whatever i go through whatever the suffering whatever the need maybe you are barren and because you are barren they say come here they say come there and they take you somewhere to give you something to eat mark your body rub this on you what's that that's idol worship what's that that's occultism what's that you're serving the devil right there because you're looking for children if you die there or if you die on your way back and you don't have a chance to repent you will go to hell that's why you're saying whatever price it will take and whatever i need to give up whatever in whatever condition i need to remain i'm going to remain because that heaven i will not miss it i said that heaven i will not miss it somebody there that heaven i will not miss it you will not miss it in jesus name we're looking at point number three steadfast perseverance with heart holiness steadfast perseverance with the holiness of heart we're looking at psalm 24 psalm 24 i'm reading from verses 3 and 4 psalm 24 we're looking at verses 3 and 4 the word of god tells us who shall ascend into the hill of the lord who shall stand in his holy place he that has clean hands and a pure heart he that has clean hands somebody stealing church money you don't have clean hands money is nothing the church does not become poor because you stole church money but you are the one that will go to hell he that has clean hands the one that is touching other people's daughter immorality i didn't go into what, what, what i'm talking about i didn't do the real thing what are you talking about i only put my hand there put my hand there. you will perish he that has clean hands your hands are not clean those who commit abortion your hands are not clean you shed innocent blood 